Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be covering one-step equation application word problems. While my previous two videos just dealt with solving one-step equations using the properties of equality and the identity properties, this video is going to go into representing more realistic scenarios using these equations and then solving them. Throughout this video, I'll be going over some different scenarios that need to use the four different operations. To wrap up this video, we'll cover a couple application questions involving geometry. I encourage you to grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, we're going to look at some word problems that use equations that have addition in them. As we go over these two examples, try to keep in mind what they have in common because they both represent equations that have addition. For the first question, Jack has already run a certain number of miles. After running 8.5 more miles, he's now run a total of 16.1 miles. Write and solve an equation to determine how many miles Jack had originally run. Setting up a model here, we know that Jack originally had ran a certain number of miles. Then we're given that Jack ran 8.5 more miles. We're going to add that onto it because it's additional mileage that he ran. Adding together what he originally ran plus the 8.5 more miles, we should get the total miles that Jack has run. One of the key words to pay attention to in the problem is the word total. Total typically means that you're adding things together. The other key word to pay attention to is the word more. The word more is more likely associated with addition, while the word less is more associated with subtraction. And a key indicator of how we know we're solving an equation is because we're looking for something that he originally had done. Oftentimes, equations can be used to help us work backwards to solve for things that we don't know. I'm going to start by using the letter m as a variable to represent the number of miles that Jack originally had run. Then I'm going to add on the 8.5 miles that he ran additionally. Adding these two together, we should get the total miles that he ran, which is 16.1 miles. Using the subtraction property of equality, I'm going to subtract 8.5 from both sides. We use the subtraction property equality to create opposites, which make zero. On the left side, we're left with m plus zero. And on the right side, 16.1 minus 8.5 is equal to 7.6. Now that we have m plus zero is equal to 7.6, we can use the identity property of addition and drop the zero and just write that m is equal to 7.6. Using a one-step equation, some algebra, as well as some properties, we were able to figure out that Jack originally ran 7.6 miles. In the next problem, Chloe bought a movie ticket and popcorn for $12.20. The movie ticket costs $8.45. Write and solve an equation to determine how much the popcorn cost. Let's start by writing another model. Part of the money that Chloe spent was from the movie ticket. Besides the movie ticket, she also spent money on popcorn, so we're going to add those two together. Adding the cost of the movie ticket to the cost of the popcorn will be the total amount of money that Chloe spent. In the problem, we're told that the movie ticket costs $8.45. Since we don't know the cost of the popcorn, I'm going to use the letter P to represent it. Adding these two prices together, we're going to get the total cost of them, which is going to be $12.20. If you're not used to seeing the constant term before the variable term, feel free to switch them if you're adding. Using the commutative property, which just means that we're switching the order around with addition, we can write P plus $8.45 is equal to $12.20. Using the subtraction property of equality, I'm going to subtract $8.45 from both sides. Once again on the left, we created opposites, which combined to make zero. So on the left side, we're left with P, or the price of popcorn, plus zero, is equal to the right side, which is $3.75. Using the identity property of addition here, we can simplify the left side and just write P is equal to $3.75. Using a one-step equation, we were able to find out that the popcorn cost $3.75. The big takeaway that I want you to notice from these two problems is that both of them represent two parts and a total. In both situations, the two parts added together to make a total. Hopefully when you see future problems that have similar scenarios, you can also set up similar equations and solve them just like this. In example two, let's take a look at some application word problems that need one-step equations with subtraction to represent them. After spending $8.17 on candy, Barack has $8.89 left. Write and solve an equation to determine how much money Barack had before buying the candy. A key word that stands out to me is this word left. When we see that Barack had $8.89 left, this means that he must have spent some money or subtracted some amount of money to have this amount afterwards. Another key word here is the word before. Again, remember that we oftentimes use equations to work backwards to solve problems. Let's start with the original money that Barack had before he spent money on candy, then subtract the money that he spent on the candy, and this will equal the money that Barack has left after buying the candy. Now that we have a verbal model, let's write an algebraic equation here. 
I'm going to use the variable D to represent the amount of dollars that Barack had before he bought the candy. Then I'm going to subtract the $8.17 that he spent on candy. This is going to equal the $8.89 that he has left over. To solve this equation, we're going to use the addition property of equality and add $8.17 to both sides. Hopefully this makes sense because the opposite of spending the $8.17 is returning the candy and getting that money back. These opposites create zero and cancel out. So on the left side, we just have D plus zero. And on the right side, adding the $8.89 plus the $8.17, we get a total of $17.06. Using the identity property of addition, we don't need to write the zero, so we can just simplify the left side to D and say that D is equal to $17.06. Since D represented the amount of money Barack had before buying the candy, we can say that Barack originally had $17.06. Let's look at this next one here. Molly was told to run a certain amount of miles for cross country this month. She had already run 4.8 miles and still needs to run 15.7 miles. Write and solve an equation to determine how many miles Molly is supposed to run in total. A key word here is already, which means that this was already done. While Molly has already run some miles, she still has more to do. The amount that she's already run plus the amount that she still needs to run should equal the total amount of miles. Now let's set up an equation that uses subtraction to solve this problem. Let's start with the total amount of miles that Molly needs to run and subtract the amount of miles that Molly has already ran. This will equal the amount of miles that Molly still has to run. To write our equation here, I'm going to use the variable t to represent the total amount of miles that Molly has to run altogether. And I'm going to subtract the 4.8 miles that she's already run. This is going to equal the 15.7 miles that she still needs to run. To solve this equation, we're going to use the addition property of equality and add 4.8 miles to both sides. On the left side, these create opposites, which canceled out to make zero. So on the left side, we can write t plus zero. And on the right side, adding 15.7 miles plus 4.8 miles, we get a total of 20.5 miles. Using the identity property of addition, we don't need to write the plus zero, so we can say t is equal to 20.5. Altogether, Molly needs to run 20.5 or 20 and a half miles. The key takeaway from these two examples is that we're going back in time to figure out what the total was. To solve these types of equations, we need to use subtraction, and then we're going to use addition to add the two parts together to get the original total. In example three, let's take a look at some word problems that use equations with multiplication. For this first problem, Julian buys 8 packs of chocolate for $27.60. Let's write and solve an equation to determine how much one pack of chocolate costs. The key thing to recognize here is that we have 8 of the same thing. Using the variable c to represent the cost of one pack of chocolate, we could add c to itself 8 times, but we could simplify this and write 8c or 8 times c instead. Since the shortcut for repeated addition is simply multiplication, you're going to want to recognize in the future that when you have repetition, you should be thinking about multiplication. Let's write a model together here. Let's start by taking the number of packs of chocolate and multiplying that by the cost of one pack. Multiplying these two together, we'll get the total cost of the chocolates. We know Julian bought eight packs, so we're going to write an eight down here. And we're going to multiply that by the cost of just one pack of chocolate, and I'm going to use the variable C to represent that. This is going to equal the total cost, which we're given, and that's going to be $27.60. Remember that when we're multiplying a number and a variable together, we can just write them together and write 8c. 8 would be our coefficient here, and 8c means 8 times c. This is going to be equal to $27.60. Since we just want the cost of one chocolate, we're going to use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 8. On the left side, this 8 over 8 cancels out to make 1 and 1. So on the left, this simplifies down to 1c, and on the right side, let's take 2760 and divide that by 8 to figure out the cost of one chocolate. Therefore, we can say the cost of one pack is $3.45. Using the identity property of multiplication, we can say that c equals $3.45. Using a one-step equation with multiplication, there's our answer. Let's take a look at the next one here. Elisa has 20 succulent plants. If this represents 5 sixths of the total plants she has, how many plants does Elisa have in total? The key word to recognize in this problem is the word of. Try to remember that the word of typically represents multiplication in math. What two things are we going to be multiplying? Well, we have the total and we have this 5 sixths. Let's set up a model here. Whenever we have problems like this, we'll set it up by saying we have the fraction of and multiply that by the total number of plants and this is going to be equal to the amount that's given. 
Since we're told that 5 6 of the total is equal to 20 succulents, we can set up the equation 5 6 multiplied by the total number of plants, which we don't know and we're going to use the variable p to represent it, and this is going to equal 20. To write this a little simpler, instead of writing 5 6 times p, we can just write 5 6 p, which means the same thing, and this is equal to 20. Now that we have our one-step equation with multiplication, let's use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 5 6. On the left side, dividing 5 6 by 5 6 is just going to equal 1, so we can simplify the left side and write 1 p. On the right side, dividing 20 by 5 6, we can write 20 as 20 over 1 and divide that by 5 6. This 5 and 20 can cross cancel to make 1 and 4, so our answer here is going to be 24 over 1, or just 24. 20 divided by 5, 6 on the right side is just equal to 24. So the total amount of flowers she has is equal to 24. It should make sense that our answer here is greater than 20 because the 20 succulents she had was just 5, 6 of the total amount of plants she had. If you want to, you can write 20 out of 24 and simplify that down, and I promise you that equals 5, 6. In example 4, let's take a look at some word problems that use equations that have division in them. In this first one, Sam goes out to eat with her three friends and they end up splitting the bill evenly. If they each contributed $8.50 to the bill, write and solve an equation to determine how much the food cost in total. The key word in this problem is the word splitting. This implies that we're going to be dividing something evenly. Since we know how much they spent individually and we're looking for the total, we know we're going to use a one-step equation here to work backwards to figure that out. Let's start with the model here. Let's take the total bill and divide that by the number of people who are splitting this bill. By doing this, we'll find out the cost that each person paid individually. Now let's write an equation. I'm going to use the variable b to represent the total bill altogether. Since Sam and her three friends makes four people, we're going to split this bill four ways. This is going to equal the $8.50 that they each spent. Rewriting this in a way you're more likely to see this in algebra, we're going to write b over 4, or b divided by 4, and this is equal to $8.50. To find the total cost of the bill altogether, we're going to have to use the reciprocal and multiply both sides by 4 here. On the left sides, this 4 over 4 cancels out to make 1 over 1, and we can simplify the left side to just write 1b. And on the right side, we're going to multiply $8.50 times 4, and that's going to equal a total of $34. Now that we've used the multiplication property of equality to cancel out the 4, we can use the identity property of multiplication to drop the 1 in front of the b and just say that b is equal to $34. Since b represented the total bill, we can say altogether Sam and her friends spent $34 at the restaurant. Let's look at the next one here. Raymond and his five friends go on a road trip and they end up splitting the cost of gas and tolls evenly. If each of them had to contribute $28.56 to the gas and tolls, write and solve an equation to determine how much the gas and tolls cost altogether. Once again, we see this word splitting, so we know that we're going to be dividing. And while we know how much they contributed individually, we need to work backwards to find out how much they spent all together. Let's take the total cost of all the gas and tolls, and divide that by the number of people, and this will equal the cost per person. Let's turn this into an equation now. I'm going to use the variable c to represent the total cost, and divide that by the number of people. Raymond and his five friends makes a total of six people, so we're going to divide by six, and this is going to equal the total cost per person which we're given in the problem is $28.56. Rewriting this, we're gonna write c over six, or c divided by six still, is equal to $28.56. Since we have division here, we're gonna use the multiplication property of equality and multiply both sides by six. We're doing this so that we can create reciprocals so these become one, and the left side simplifies down to just one c. On the right side, we have to multiply this 28.56 by six. If six people all contributed $28.50, we know that altogether they spent $171.36. After using the multiplication property of equality to cancel out the six, we can use the identity property of multiplication to drop the one and say that C is equal to 171.36. While Raymond and his friends each spent $28.56 individually, the six of them altogether spent $171.36. In both of these problems, we knew how much each of them spent individually, but we didn't know the total. In the future, when you see the word splitting, try to think of division, and in order to solve division problems, you're going to have to use multiplication. And finally, for example 5, we're going to practice writing and solving equations for geometry application problems. A rectangle has a length of 6 meters and an area of 58.8 square meters. 
write and solve an equation to determine the width of the rectangle. First, I'm gonna start by drawing a rectangle and label the length over here and the width over here. While you might think that the length always has to be the longer side, remember that actually doesn't even matter because when you're multiplying to find the area, length times width is gonna be the same thing as width times length. And as for the area, I'm gonna use a capital A to represent that, which is the amount of space inside the rectangle. We're told the length is six, so I'm gonna write that L is equal to six. And we're told that the area is equal to 58.8 square meters. That's gonna be inside. The unknown we have here is how long the width is. The formula for finding the area of a rectangle is capital A is equal to the length times the width. Since we know the area is 58.8, we can substitute that in on the left side. And since we know the length is six, we can substitute that in for L. And our width is unknown, so we're gonna keep that as W. Here we have a one-step equation that has multiplication as our operation. The inverse operation of multiplication is gonna be division, so we're gonna divide both sides by six. On the right side, this allows us to cancel out the six and six to make one and one. So we can simplify the right side to just be one W. And on the left side, we have to take 58.8 and divide that by six to find out what the width is. Dividing 58.8 by six here, we can see that our width is gonna be 9.8. Using the identity property of multiplication, we can drop the one in front of the W and just write that W is equal to 9.8. Therefore, if we have a rectangle that has an area of 58.8 square meters and the length is six meters, the width has to be 9.8 meters. Let's take a look at the next one here. A rectangle has a width of three and a half feet and an area of 32 and one fifth square feet. Write and solve an equation to determine the length of the rectangle. Here's my rectangle and I'm gonna label the width over here as three and a half feet. As for the length, we don't know what it is, so I'm gonna use the variable L to represent that. And finally, we're given that the area is equal to 32 and 1 fifth square feet. Just like the last problem, we can write our formula is equal to capital A is equal to the length times the width. Capital A, or the area, is 32 and a fifth, so we can substitute that in on the left side. And we don't know the length, so we're going to keep that as L. And we know our width is 3 and a half, so we're going to substitute that in for the width, or W. Whenever we multiply a variable by a number, we should turn it around and write it as a coefficient. So on the right side, we're gonna have three and a half L. Whenever we multiply a number by a letter, we typically write the number first as a coefficient, and we don't write mixed numbers as coefficients. Three and a half is the same thing as seven halves, so we can rewrite the right side here as seven halves L. Remember when multiplying that multiplication is commutative. That means that if you have five times seven, that's the same thing as seven times five. So in this case, L times three and a half, or L times seven halves, is equivalent to seven halves times L, or seven halves L. And on the left side, we still have this 32 and one fifth. To find the length of the rectangle, we're gonna have to use the division property of equality and divide both sides by seven over two. On the right side, the seven over two divided by seven over two cancels out to make one. So on the right side, we just have one L. And on the left side, we have to take 32 and one fifth and divide that by seven over two. Our length here turns out to be nine and one fifth feet. Using the identity property of multiplication, we can drop the one in front of the L and say that length is equal to nine and one fifth. If the area of this rectangle was 32 and a fifth square feet and the width was three and a half feet long, the length has to be nine and one fifth feet. In both problems, we use the division property of equality to find out the missing dimension. And that wraps up this video on some application problems with one-step equations. If you found this video helpful, please let me know in the comment section below. Simply click that like button, keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.